Appalachian Wellness, for a new tomorrow and a new you. I'm Raymond Owenbrink, president and owner of Appalachian Wellness. Today we're going to talk to, about the approach to the patient who suffers from chronic inflammatory response syndrome, or SIRS. The protocol developed by Dr. Shoemaker takes on a very methodical stepwise approach to treating SIRS. The absolute, absolute most crucial step is complete avoidance of exposure in the future. The afflicted become sicker quicker because their immune system has already been primed. This makes evolutionary sense. When triggered with a threat to our lives, our immune system, our stormtroopers, our first responders against infection that need to be ready to go in an instant with a hefty armament to take out specific attackers, be they strep, staph, viruses, anything that we've been exposed to in our past, etc. These first responders also have good memory of things that they've met in the past and know how to defeat. It's important to remember, too, that if the patient suddenly seems to relapse and worsen, the only logical approach is to assume re-exposure. We may not know what, when, where until we look and go back to the basics, back to square one at the initial step, and resume the sequential treatment that Dr. Shoemaker designed. VCS testing, visual contrast sensitivity, is very specific for SIRS. It can serve as an early warning system for re-exposure. Once the exposure has been removed, often the most difficult step, the toxins need to be removed and then they require monitoring. This cannot be overemphasized. You will not get better if there are still toxins in your environment. Briefly, the steps will be listed below and we will follow up with more detail on other shows. Number one, after exposure re reduction or removal, cholestyramine, questran, or, or colcelivam, well call, bind the toxins. Well call has about 20% of the efficiency effectiveness that Questran has. C3A is part of the cascade of the complement system, rises with presence of pathogenic membranes. Think of things like Lyme disease. C4A rises with other non-membrane biotoxins, volatile organic compounds, VOCs, mold is a good producer of VOCs, sigmatoxin, comes from consuming tropical reef predator fish, larger fish, dinoflagellates like red tide bloom, that sort of thing. Patients need to be in, educated about the risks posed by volatile organic compounds, VOCs. We'll get more into this later. Meths, multiple antibiotic resistant coagulase negative staph. That's a mouthful. We'll just call it Marcons from now on. It needs to be looked for and cleared. There's an APA staph test done by Microbiology DX. It takes time. This germ causes a biofilm. It's a slime layer, if you will, in the sinuses. It's not a planktonic or free living form of bacteria. These staff take time to culture, and it's best to get this culture to patient's initial visit. It can take four weeks or more before we have the results back. Gluten gliadin sensitivity, wheat protein sensitivity, needs to be looked for, especially in younger patients. They seem to be more prone to this. If the AGA is positive, a one to three month trial of a strict gluten free diet, it may improve their condition. If they relapse on reintroduction to gluten, tissue transglutamase testing and other further avoidance may be necessary. Androgen and aromatase function, if impaired, often responds to upstream DHEA supplementation. Aromatase is an enzyme that breaks down testosterone into estradiol, which is one of the estrogens, also known as E2. And with the SIRS disease process, the aromatase enzyme seems to go into overdrive, increasing dihydroepiandosterone, or DHEA, will help, help with those androgen levels, but the really definitive treatment involves treating SIRS. Once the SIRS is under control, the excess aromatase activity resolves. Things get back to normal. Middle steps of the protocol involve matrix metalloproteinase 9, antidiuretic hormone and osmolality disre uh, dysregulation, adrenal corticotropic hormone, cortisol dysregulation. All these may be affected and we need to look. When I re re use the term dysregulation, ADH usually goes up as the osmolality or number of salts in the blood go up. Uh, ACTH causes the cortisol to go up. With these folks, instead of rising in parallel, 
One may be going up while the other one may be going down. And this is another indication that SERS is going on and we need to address these issues. And these issues will correct as we get the SERS under control. C3A, C4, and leptin levels will influence our approach to correcting all of these abnormal markers. Monitoring all these parameters during treatment is indicated based on the overall patient condition and as indicated by the VCS early warning system. And again, it's back to square one if the patient gets worse. The pinnacle of treatment involves correction of high transforming growth factor beta 1 using low levels of vasoactive intestinal peptide, which is replaced with a nasal spray. There's a diagram that shows how people will improve. We've reviewed that on a prior slide. This is re referring to that uh, pyramid-shaped diagram. 